So now we've come to the focus of today's event. It's time for our first speaker to kick off the great respect debate. As you can see, he's just just waiting to get up there chanting a bit. Please join me in welcoming our first speaker, the Right Reverend Dr. Peter Hollingworth to the lecture. Dr. Hollingworth will be the first of our first speakers on our topic, Seniors Must Earn Respect. Thank you, Pete. This is my golden wedding jubilee tie, and I thought I'd wear it today. In opening the case for the affirmative, that respect must be earned by senior members of our society. Our team highlights the word earned. We hasten to say that this is in no way to devalue the importance of human respect, nor that seniors don't deserve it, nor that a moral judgment is being made about the capabilities of older people. For it is a universal desire on the part of every member of society to be treated with dignity and respect. But that expectation is not easily entrenched as a human right, and organisations like Benefess work very hard to do that. As far as older people or seniors are concerned, this is a more difficult thing indeed to achieve, especially in Western, industrialised societies like ours. Indeed, in stark contrast to indigenous and traditional societies, where the place of the elders is strongly upheld and a place of honour is conferred upon them as the guardians of tribal tradition, custom and folklore. Take such things away or devalue them as we have done means that the place of honour gradually disappears, hence the need to earn it. As you have demonstrated, Mr. Adjudicator, Bernard Salt, our world has changed in our lifetime. In modern Western societies, who you are and how you are regarded by others is largely determined by work status and wealth. Remove that and respect is diminished. Once we leave the regular workforce, we're officially categorised as being retired. Once we cease to be a unit of production, it is but a small step to regard us as the drain on the economy because we appear to contribute less by way of work and earnings. We are seen to be of less use and therefore of less value than those who, quote, work. Hence the requirement to earn respect. I'm not saying that's a good thing. Our team does not argue that, but that is the fact. Indeed, the fact that we are having this debate highlights what's happened in changing from a traditional to a modern industrial society where there is no prescribed role for the elders. It looks as though we will have to adopt, perish the term, a new paradigm to reconstruct a place and a sense of worth for all the citizens. This is, as you've said, Mr. Salt, a matter of engineering. We want to move on from this fact, and we want to demonstrate what seniors now need to do to rectify the problem so as to secure appropriate respect. Words like engagement and participation point the way forward Words like retirement are a positive danger because this implies the opposite. The challenge then for seniors is to stay engaged in the mainstream, to keep in touch with younger people, to demonstrate our usefulness and to show how we contribute to the well-being of others. Mary Barry will follow with an affirmative of great uh, personal example of earning respect and how it will be a challenge as she gets older. You'll notice she is the baby boomer in our midst, just. To summarise the case for the affirmative, on leaving the full-time paid workforce, we will, we will declare that the best is yet to be. It involves finding a new role 
not necessarily a form of undefined by paid work, but by being active participants, working as involved grandparents, mentors to young people in school, as seniors in clubs and guilds, surrogate great aunts and aunties for children who don't have them, using our skills and experience to assist those who are young and in need. We have good long-term memories, not necessarily short-term ones. We remember past events and we believe that we can bring to bear the learnings from the past. We won't want to hark back to a mythical or idealised past, but to demonstrate that the past can inform the present and shape the future. If doing such things amount to earning respect, then surely we would want to do just that. <laughs>